Coming up in our next installment of America's Hope, honoring our veterans. We focus on those who have served, some of them in harm's way, like combat wounded veteran Major Ed Polito. And the voices of service join us as they talk about spreading the hope of America in song, duty, honor, and country. We don't know them all, but we owe them all. That's next on America's Hope. Good evening, I'm Kelly Wright, and this is America's Hope. And on this special day, we are honoring veterans. Veterans Day, a day that we can all collectively pay attention to the men and women who have sometimes made the ultimate sacrifice so that we here in America can be free and hold on to this wonderful gift of hope. So today we're going to focus on veterans and pay honor to what they have done, to pay honor to their families. And we'll hear from people who have served in the military and what they're now doing to not only recognize and acknowledge the help that's needed for the members of the veteran community, but also the active duty military family, as well as first responders. It's all happening here, right here now on America's Hope. Let's get started. I'd like to say that I'm proud to introduce our first guest. Uh, basically, this is based on the two-time PGA Major Champion, John Daly, uh, combining his skills and his passion for veterans to work alongside combat wounded veteran, Major Ed Polito, U.S. Army retired. And I'm happy to say that uh, Major Ed is joining us right now. Talk to me about the significance first of uh, Veterans Day, and then let's talk about your organization, Heart of a Lion. Well, thank you so much for having me. What an honor and privilege uh, to be able to talk to you because I've seen you for years. And I just want to tell you what a great day to be an American and what a great day to give hope to others. And that to me is what Veterans Day is all about is giving hope to people and their freedom all over this world for many, many years, we have done what, you know, our country has called us upon to do, and that is to provide freedom around the world, to secure our nation. And uh, as my father once told me, is that when you take the oath of office to defend the greatest nation in the world, it was always about our faith in God, our love for our country, and the opportunity for us to thrive and be successful to take care of our families. To me, that's what Veterans Day is all about, making sure that we honor those that protect our freedom and our dignity to be able to live in a nation where we're all free. You know, I'm so glad you uh, said that and the way you explained and described what veterans do for this nation, uh, this great country called the United States of America. Uh, talk to me about your organization that you and John Daly work together on. Well, I have to start by telling you that I've known John Daly for a long time. His heart has always been to take care of others, uh, even though he's had some setbacks in life. And certainly now he's on the right track. And I will tell you that he's the journeyman of golf. A lot of people don't know that. You know, it's just everyday persons can get out there and play the game. And that's what John represents. And one of the things that John did uh, about three years ago was called me to action. Um, Kelly, if you remember, I used to be with the Folds of Honor Foundation, and I, I actually retired and retired for a month, and then all of a sudden I end up joining forces with John Daly and a lot of other country music artists that called us to action to create the heart of a lion. And the heart is the purple heart, and the lion is John's lion of making sure that we leave no one behind on the field of battle and that we take care of people on the home front. And that to me is the essence of providing mental, physical, and wellness support to our nation's veterans and their families, our first responders and America's children. And I think we can all agree that as part of this show that we're giving hope and opportunity, but we're also letting people know that you know what, we care. And that's what Americans do all year round. 
I'm so grateful that you're, you're doing this because uh, Americans do care about veterans. They do care about active duty military. Uh, you know, when I introduced you, uh, Major Ed, I talked about the fact that you were a combat wounded, wounded veteran. Can you relive those moments for me and, and talk about uh, the bravery of the men who were serving alongside of you? Well, I, I have to just start by saying that, you know what, it was a collective group of individuals, um, people like you that gave us hope, you know, when we needed to tell our story. And the thing that was so important for me uh, in 2004 uh, was the fact that, you know what, the enlisted and non-commissioned officer, the backbone of our military, and I always remember that, and I always say that because as a young man at 17, I was an enlisted service member, and I understand the importance of the enlisted and non-commissioned officer who basically are on the front lines, as you stated, and have the courage and the opportunity not only to serve, but to sacrifice. Um, you know, some have sacrificed their lives while some sacrificed their limbs. If you recall during that time of battle, there was a lot of um, insurgency, a lot of dysfunction, chaos. Um, th you know, the resources were not up to par yet as you remember, because yeah. uh, our armored vehicles weren't to where they needed to be to the highest of standards. And I don't say that in a negative way. You go into, into battle and you go in with what you have. And I just want to premise that by saying that no matter what happened, we stuck together. Our leaders, um, and I worked for General Petraeus at the time with the Coalition Military Assistance Training Teams, training the Iraqi Army, connecting them to you know the basic uh, services and and the other coalition forces on the ground, and, and you were aware of all of that, yeah. that to me, um, that was the essence of all of us coming together and, and really giving the Iraqi people hope. Because that to me is what is so important is that we always talk about the negativity of war, but you know what, at the end of the day, I took an oath of office to defend this nation, to defend my men and women who fought with me. And uh, to all of them, you know, on Veterans Day, we thank them, but you know, it was very uh, tough times, and and tough missions, but at the end of the day, you know what, that's our job, and that's what we do for securing freedom all over the world. Your message to those who might be watching right now who are wounded veterans, what's your message to them to never let go of hope, and what's your message to us as average Americans, as citizens, to show our love and appreciation for their sacrifice? Well, I wrote a book, and I, it's called Warrior for Freedom. It's my autobiography of, of my story. And in that book, I, I write about exactly what you just described. What can we do to give everyone hope? Number one, we have to let people know that faith drives us. And I know that you're a faithful man. Um, you know, you talk about your faith and I know that, you know, we all live by that. And to me, that is so important, but we also have to have a country that supports us. And I remember my father, who's a Vietnam veteran who passed away last year on Thanksgiving. He always would tell me, you know what, the mistakes that were made on us in Vietnam will never be made on you, young man. And that we stand clear on. And I, it's so important of a message to let people know that we haven't made, no, we've made mistakes, yes, but what we've done is we've really truly, as the American people, embraced the fact that no matter what we what's going on politically in this country, because I talk a lot about that, is that, you know what, we can all come together for our veterans and their families. And that is the essence of the third pillar, families, making sure that our families are taken care of, are supported, making sure that you know, legislation is passed by our leaders in Congress to make sure that, you know what, we have the tools, the resources, the support, the mental health, the physical health, you know, I've lost a leg in combat and I live with a traumatic brain injury. And to me, I've received the best care possible. That to me is the standards of excellence. That's what makes us Americans. And that's what should enable everyone that's listening today to understand that, you know what, we all, no matter what's going on politi politically, that we can all come together. And as Ronald Reagan once said, um, in his inaugural address in 1981, we're all Americans in this together, and we are. And to me, this is the essence of having this interview is to tell people that there's hope, opportunity, and that there's a, a level of respect that we have for those individuals who put on the uniform each and every day and go out to work to secure this nation and its people. 
And that to me is what the founding fathers wanted us to do. And that's what we're doing today to give everyone, um, even from every diverse background, an opportunity mm -hmm. to serve in the greatest military in the world. Major, I, I, I applaud you. I appreciate you, uh, my friend. Thank you. Uh, my final question for you, as I ask everybody on this show is, what is your hope for America? Well, my hope for America right now is for all of us to come together uh, to know and understand that, you know what, at the end of the day, uh, there are sacrifices that are made. There are is turmoil right now around the world. And that, you know, at the, at, at the, the way I look at things is that the only way that we can be empowered to be the best that we can be is to make sure that, you know, everyone is respected and diversity and all of the things that are involved with making sure that we're all inclusive to who we are and what we're all about with our values in, in place. And I think that to me um, is the fact that, you know what, I, it's, it's sad sometimes where I see some negativity and what's going on in the Middle East, uh, but I also have hope that, you know what, we'll resolve the problems which now confront us because after all, we're all Americans and we're all together to make sure that, you know what, the world is the best that it can be and that our fellow Americans are taken care of and thrive and are successful each and every day in the communities that they live in. So that's my hope. And my other final hope is that, you know what, that all of us embrace our faith um, in, in our creator and in our nation and uh, hope that we can pray for those that are not in a good place and give them hope uh, to be in a better place tomorrow. Major Ed Polito, U.S. Army retired, combat wounded veteran. Thank you for your service, sir. I know I don't take that lightly. Yeah, I have a lot of gratitude and respect for what you do. And, and thank you for what you're doing now to help so many people in this country. Appreciate you for being on America's Hope. Got to come back. Thank you, sir. Hoorah. Hoorah. <laughs> And welcome back to America's Hope. My next guest is someone who served the United States Marine Corps. And on this Veterans Day celebration that we're having on America's Hope, it's fitting that we celebrate the service of uh, Chris Wilson, who was a member of the Marines, and now his son is serving the Marine Corps. He'll talk to us about that. But I want to take a note here. Chris went on after his years of service, four years in the Marines, to start a company called American Grunt. Now that's a veteran owned company providing products that coincide with a patriotic lifestyle. Uh, and so it's for men and women's grooming and he provides products that are symbolic to the United States military. He's here to talk about that, but also to talk about what it means to serve uh, the United States military. Chris, thank you for joining us this hour. Thanks for having me. You know, when you started your company, uh, you started it with uh, respect of veterans realizing that there were unique things that military members have in terms of grooming. So talk to me about your company first and then let's get into what it was like for you to serve and sometimes serving in harm's way on tours of duty that took you to hot spots around the world. Yeah, so um, American Grunt, uh, very personal to me. My, it's a lot of it's reflecting my time in the, the Marine Corps and, and friends of mine that have served. So our grooming products, style products are reflective and symbolic with, uh, you know, engineers in the Army, grunts in the infantry. Um, that we also have an apparel company, too, with, you know, our side of the business that has uh, polos, hats, uh, T-shirts, all that good stuff. So it's something that um, want to tell a story. And if you served, you get it. Um, if you didn't, you can research and understand it. Um, back to the, the service part, I think for me personally, you never know or are concerned about your well-being when you're serving as much as when you have a kid serving. And I found that out with my son who followed my footsteps, who is deployed right now and attached the, to the 31st Mew out of Okinawa. So for me, I never thought about that much. Um, I think about it much more as a parent now. When you were going through it personally, though, what was it like serving uh, in the Corps, knowing that you were defending the freedoms that we hold and value so highly here in America? You know, for me, uh, being a Marine grunt or infantryman was a very, it was a rough life. Um, I forgot about a lot of the, the good or a lot of the bad, and I think more about the good now. Um, as I get older and stay in contact with fellow Marines I served with, um, there's, there's times when you're told something's going to happen, maybe it doesn't happen, they get your heart racing. A lot of times it's just um, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. 
And for me, um, there's nothing more um, that means more in my life than being a U.S. Marine serving this country. Um, even though I know there's people in this country that don't love it as much as others, I do it all over again. I mean, it's a world to me. Thank you for, for your service and thank you for explaining that. You talked about being a grunt, an infantryman. Let's, let's, just, let's explain the, what a, a grunt really does, if you can explain the definition of that. Yeah, the, uh, to put it in short, they're, they're the door kickers, the front line, uh, the pointy end of the spear. So they're, they're the boots on the ground. So um, if you pay attention to what's going on in the world right now, um, if you hear infantry is on the ground, um, say we're in the Middle East, you know, things are probably going to get uh, again to a point where it's going to get pretty ugly. Yeah. In short, they're the tip of the spear. They're the ones going into hot spots all around the world, as we saw uh, Americans do in Afghanistan and Iraq. And of course, going back to previous wars as well to defend this country and for that matter, the free world. When you look at the situation today going on and, and what's happening in America, uh, and the fact, uh, Chris, that only uh, that less than one percent of Americans actually raise their hands to volunteer to protect and defend these United States of America. Does that give you pause and concern? A hundred percent. I think it's very concerning. I was just read an article too. I think that the Marine Corps was, the only, I believe it or not, out of all the branches, was the only one that hit their goal for recruiting so far and you know what they're offering now and, and increasing age limits i believe stuff to get people to join it's 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 saddening you know people ask me why i do it or they say you know i wouldn't let my kids serve right now under current administrations or whatever for me for my family uh the people i know we didn't do it for for who was in office we did it because we love the country we want to earn the uniform um and, and serve this great country so it's very concerning i think our, our youth is in a different mindset right now and I think there's a lot of entitlement, um, but there are still great young men and women that are, uh, you know, putting it all on the line that still want to serve for one reason or another. Most of them are very patriotic. And, it, and that makes me proud. And I think we'll always have. And that's what made it has always made America so strong and good. Is we, it's a choice. And for those that want to fight, will fight. Yeah. Uh, for your son, for example, when he joined, when you had that father son conversation, about your son saying, Dad, I think I'm going to join the Marine Corps following your footsteps. What was your initial reaction? I mean, it's, it was tough. It was tough letting him go. It was really tough on his mom. Um, and if, if anyone's been there with the son that's gone to the armed services, you get it. You know, they've been with you for 18 years and all of a sudden they're gone. There's no contact. You don't know what they're up to, what they're going through, unless you've done it yourself. It, it was very tough. So our conversations now are more about he can share his stories with my stories, stories that relate. And uh, I think it's brought us closer together. Chris, I, I want to get back to your product, American Grunt, and the fact that you provide these grooming supplies uh, and products for, for not only members of the military and veterans, but the blue collar worker, the first responders. And, and these products reflect patriotism and America's freedom and our rights. You were stating that your goal is to deliver quality products that the hardworking patriotic American wants to showcase. So talk to me about the products and, and also how people can contact you. And does it support uh, the military members or the veterans? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we are actually just on our first store. It's uh, Born United in Norfolk, Virginia, also Marine and veteran owned. Our website is www.americgrunt.com. Um, and like I said, these, these products are, you know, they might be themed after first responders, uh, military veterans, but they're for everybody. They're, they're for a patriotic lifestyle, as we like to say, you know, from golfing products to fishing products. Now we just added some UPF 50 fishing shirts as well. So um, we also have a 501c3 that is attached to our company called American Grunt Life Tours. And our mission is to partner with veteran foundations and um, first responder foundations and take members of their foundations on tours such as golf and fishing to create awareness for their cause. So we have uh, teamed up twice this year with the John Daly Majorette Foundation, uh, Heart of a Lion. We did a golf trip in April in Mesquite, Nevada, and then we just wrapped up a fishing trip in September to the Florida Keys. And uh, happy to say that we've raised $50,000 for that organization this year. But most importantly, we got large groups of, of people to join us, patriots, that wanted to create um, awareness for the cause. And to us, giving your time is more important than giving your money. Outstanding, outstanding. Uh, Chris, uh, final question is, what's your hope for America? <laughs> 
that everyone loves it as much as, as much as everybody that served this country. I, I think patriotism is dying and that's why I do what I do. My friends do what we do. That's what Major Ed does what he does. Um, I think there's a lot of entitlement. And if you were born in this country, you won the lottery and should be very thankful for it. <laughs> I like the way you say that. I like the way you say that. God bless America. Chris, thank you so much for what you do and thank you for your service to this nation. God bless you, my friend. And welcome back to America's Hope. We're still celebrating Veterans Day, which took place on Saturday, but we're still honoring the veterans. It's never too late and never time to stop saying thank you for your service. Speaking of that, one of my colleagues here at NTD is Jason Perry. Jason Perry joins us now. You're a reporter here, a correspondent. You do this excellent work for, this, for the network and grateful for that as well. But I also wanna thank you for being a veteran of the United States Army. And you served in harm's way, you're a combat veteran. Um, and on this special program where we're honoring veterans, what was it like for you? What motivated you to join the United States Army? Um, to be honest, I was just thinking about, <clears throat> thinking about this yesterday and it was actually uh, basketball. Really? Basketball and to get college money to play for a school that wanted me to play for them, but they did not want to give me a scholarship, I guess. And then the journey began. The journey began, you joined the United States Army and, and what unfolded as you began to serve your country? Um, it was very interesting to start out because whenever I was selecting my job, <clears throat> excuse me, I wasn't sure what job to choose. And whenever I was at uh, MEPS, the Military uh, Entrance Processing Center, uh, I think it was about four different jobs came up. I think it was like lawyer, kind of doctor, nurse, or something like this. And one was broadcast journalist. And I didn't even know what that was really coming fresh out of high school. And my recruiter was like, hey, pick that one, pick that one. And then so I just went off of his gut and then, you know, I picked broadcast journalists and did the training. They taught us in the Army, they teach you not only to be the journalist, but to be the cameraman, to do the video editing. And yeah, you know, learned to do that. And it was uh, interesting to do. I learned a lot, very intense training <clears throat> through that class. If we failed any section of it, you got one more chance and then you were done. So luckily I, I passed that and, you know, so many years later, I'm now using that experience, which it seems to have come in full circle. In many ways, because uh, you do outstanding work. Uh, but while you were serving in that capacity in the military, you were also uh, deployed to uh, a very, very hot spot, and that was Iraq during the war in Iraq. Um, uh, how long did you serve in that capacity and then uh, move on to becoming uh, a contractor? Um, yeah, that was very interesting. I got the phone call that I was going to be deployed. I still remember it vividly. Um, it was January 2020, January 2004. And the phone call was asking where I was at. I'm like, I'm at home. And they said I was late, um, that I had orders to be at a certain place. And yeah, it was orders for 18 months to go to Iraq. But <clears throat> the, the catch was I wouldn't be going as what I was trained to do. I wasn't going to be going as a broadcast journalist with my unit. They were actually signing me up um, to do another mission with intelligence to work as human intelligence to, I guess, gain more on the ground information about the war in Iraq and to hopefully help steer the war in the right direction. <clears throat> so sooner or later, you know, I went through the training and in 2000, the summer of 2004, I was in Baghdad and I remember there was a small group that got there before us. And I was just joining with them and they were sitting outside of these trailers at, at Camp Victory. And I remember just hearing the, the first boom. Yeah, the first explosion. And I remember kind of looking around and everybody's just sitting there talking. And then I was like, okay, I'll just try to chill. And then the, the next one was a little bit louder. And then I said, hey guys, I'm just gonna check on something in the room <laughs> real quick. <laughs> <laughs> 
And then I remember I sat in the room for like, yeah, I could just hear it. I was like, wow, is this for real? And then, you know, over so much time, <clears throat> you know, you get used to it. So looking back and the time that you served in harm's way to help our nation uh, and, and also to protect uh, freedom, what's your reflection on, on being a, a member of the United States military? Totally um, glad that I did it. Totally proud that I did it that, you know, I have a, a foot in the game that I've put, you know, my blood, sweat and tears on the line for this country. <clears throat> and not too many people, I guess, can say that they have done that. But, you know, I also thank all the other veterans that have done, done you know, served the country. Looking at, you know, this current war with um, Israel and Hamas and how things may spread, you know, I could have been in this same situation and for you know anybody in the military right now, it's a very important time for our country to have people willing to fight for the freedoms that we have. Um, I've been in the military, I've traveled the world, been to many countries, met many places, and America is by far the best country in the world. And it's definitely, it's a good feeling to, to know that I helped defend this nation. Well, it's, a, it's a good to know that you're working here at NTD. And I, I'm honored to know you. And I want to say from soldier to soldier and journalist to journalist, thank you for your service and for what you're doing as a journalist now for this nation and for the world. Thank you too, Kelly. Jason Perry here on America's so Hope. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Right there, that's the voices of service and uh, what a great sound that they provide. And of course, America got accustomed to them because they burst onto the music scene while they were still members of the United States military. They were participants on America's Got Talent and they did extremely well, as you can tell. And all of them are joining me right now. And Voices of Service, it's good of you to join us. We've got, let me start with the ladies first, Crystal Reams, and then we have Mr. Caleb Green, and then James L. Hanna, and then Ron Demetrius Henry. Hello, everybody. It's such a blessing to have you guys on. First of all, I've got to say happy Veterans Day and thank each and every one of you for the service that you've given to God and country. Thank you for your support. Thank you for having us. Appreciate it. Absolutely. So where do I begin? Uh, so on this program, we're focusing on what Veterans Day means. I, I should first uh, ask, how long have each of you served? I guess, Crystal, since you're the last one to have retired, how long were you in? I was in for 29 years, eight months and 27 days. But again, who's counting? <laughs> and, and Caleb, what about you? Uh, yes, sir. I served 30 years, eight months and some change. But like she said, who's counting? All right, Jason. Depends on who's counting. No, but um, <laughs> no, I served uh, 24 years. And Ron? 20 years exactly. Wow. And, and so were all of you in the same branch of service? Correct. Yes, the oldest and the, and the best branch, yes. United, United States, States Army. Army. Cool. Cool. Which I served in for four years. I'm I'm a I'm just a, a whippersnapper to you guys. Thank you for uh, <laughs> no. Thank you for your service. Yeah, thank you. It all counts, sir. It all oh, counts. I appreciate that. So look, let's talk about uh, why you got involved in music and how music became your way of uh, sending out to the world a universal message of faith, of hope, and of love. Wow, that's. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna call low hanging fruit. Um, for me personally, the journey of music started at a very young age and it was so easy, just so easy to tell my story in life through song. And I'm very blessed to have been able to, after many years, um, meet like-minded uh, people who have had a similar journey. You know, we've, you know, different conduits, rivers or streams that led to the ocean, but, um, as veterans, as uh, people who have a story to tell and who can help 
others tell their story through music. That's just kind of the great privilege that I enjoy um, with my music. Yeah, that's that's really nice. I I like that. Uh, what about the rest of you, uh, uh, Crystal? What about you? So for me, music has been a part of me um, since I was a child. I, I mean, I, I think all of us could say that, but um, it has been a a lifeline for me since I was young. Uh, my mother was a vocalist. Um, many members of my family's my family were singers and 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 musicians. And, uh, you know, coming into the military, um, it helped me cope with a lot of things. Music did. It helped me, um, you know, maintain sanity. It just, it, it helped me so much. And then to be able to take that love of music and join with the, uh, these wonderful people and uh, whom, whom I love dearly and join with them and be able to present that to the world is like the greatest gift you could ever, is the greatest gift of me, of my soul and of who I am to the world. Wow. And, and Jason, uh, I mean, I, I love what I'm hearing. Uh, uh, and I love you guys so much, but uh, Jason, what about you? What, what what about the music? So I grew up around all types of music, um, foreign music, classical music, jazz, gospel, R&B, any kind of music that you can think of, I grew up around it. So it, it was, I would say the bug bit me very early. And um and for me, music is just a, it's a way to express myself. There's there's so many ways that people can express themselves artistically. And for me, music in whatever form, it, if I find it in, whether I'm playing the piano, whether I'm playing the drums, whether I'm singing, whether I'm rapping, whatever, it's a, just a way for me to be, um, to express myself and to also communicate with other folks that are, that are like-minded. That's so, so good. And uh, uh, Ron, uh, last, but certainly not least, Yes. So music started with me through church. Um, I remember as a child going to one church, falling asleep and waking up in another church hearing another <laughs> song. So, um, yeah, music started there, uh, growing up, listening to different genres, as Jason said, and just flourishing uh, your craft on those different uh, things that you love. Um, it. it I can say for the four of us, we are music. Every aspect of our lives is music. Uh, whether we're, it's a story, whether it's it's in happiness, whether it's in sadness, um, we speak through music. Uh, we have developed a craft to not only that we do sing, but we sing through people, not just to people. Uh, singing through people uh, gives us a, a show of transparency to let them see our live story, who we really are. Um, our name fits us to the T. We are the voices of service. And our job is to do a service to sing through people, to let them know that there is hope and that there is love. Man, I'm telling you, Ron just took us back to church again, didn't he? <laughs> That's Ron. That's Ron. <laughs> Will someone please come forward now? <laughs> That's the offering plate. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help it. <laughs> That's okay. That's all good. So yeah. look, the bottom line is, yeah, you, you all for all the aforementioned uh, statements from each of you about the power of music as it reflects the power of hope, it's also the power of your personal narrative, collectively and individually. All of you have served the United States military. All of you have served in harm's way. Uh, and and I think anyone watching this program would understand uh, that music, really historically, music has always been part of the United States military. But the, the work that you did as service members, talk to me about the value of being involved in active duty military service uh, for the United States of America to protect the freedoms that we hold dear. Um, Crystal, let me begin with you. I, and I hate pick on you first, but you are the lady in the room. So uh, ladies first, when you joined the military, why did you raise your hand to, to, to say that I will protect and defend for the United States of America? So, you know, that's, that it, it's, it's really interesting that you asked that direct question in that way, because my main reason for joining the military to start with was because I wanted my mother, I grew up in a single parent home. I wanted my mother to walk off her front doorstep and feel safe. That's, that's where it started. And I remember leaving my home um, 
the day that I, cause I actually joined the national guard first. I was in the national guard first and um, I joined the national guard first. And I remember leaving that day and going like leaving one day and going to basic training and AIT and coming home and saying, mom, I want to do this for good. I, I, I want, this is where I want to stay. And I remember her fear and, and, and everything, but to me, it was the right answer. It was just the right answer. It was my way of giving back to the world that had given so much to me. So it's very simple. And all of that came to pass again, you know, like came full circle when 9-11 hit. Wow. Thank you for that. Such an inspirational and powerful statement. So Jason, I, I've got to ask you, uh, the, the the life that you chose to live and, and raising your hand to say, you know, you're taking this oath to protect uh, America uh, against enemies, foreign and domestic. What what compelled you to do that? My journey was uh, an evolutionary journey, if you will. I started um, to basically to honor a commitment. My I had I was a uh, came from the inner city, and I had had a daughter right out of high school, and of course I needed some way to be able to take care of her and to like I said to honor the commitment of being a father. So. I joined to to make sure that I kind of shored up that defense to make sure that, that would not be a problem. And over time, because I mean, I did, I signed up for four years, like most people do, or two or four years or whatever the first initial stint is. And I signed up and then I realized, well, A, here's the thing, I actually enjoy what I'm doing. You know, there's a, there's a, a thing when you start you know, something for one reason, but then it morphs into a whole nother reason. And you realize that like chess, you can do more than one thing with a move. I was like, I can serve my country. I can take care of my family. I can, you know, um, instill pride in, in the uniform. I can do a lot of different things just with this one move. And so again, my my, my uh, journey evolved in, into the service that I, that I did and I stayed 24 years. So apparently it, uh, it meant something. Yeah, the the evolution be, became a, a revolution for you personally, and uh, look what's happened as a result of that. Um, uh, uh, Rhonda, I'll go to you now. You you also did the same thing that uh, Crystal and Jason uh, did. You raised your hand to uh, protect uh, the United States of America as a member of the United States Army. What what motivated you to do that? My motivation, Kelly, was service to country. Um, at the time I joined, I was living in Florida. A little small town called Plant City, Florida, which is known as the strawberry capital of the world. Um, in that community, I grew up watching people helping one another. Uh, whether you had a farm, whether you had cattle, whether you had uh, uh, growing growing different types of vegetables, but we we grew in a neighborhood where if you needed help. I learned to come and help. Even if you had nothing to do with it, hey, this person needs help to crop harvest their farm. We all got together and we all went over and helped that person, helped that neighbor. Um, that created a sense of pride to me that, okay, if I can help my community, I can help my nation by serving my country. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Caleb? I did make a decision that my my family had served but none of them said, you have to do this. But I could take a look at the pathways and I could see that they got to go see the world. I could see that they were articulate. I got to see honor, not because of the uniform, but because of the man or the woman that was in my family who did it. And I did do it for educational purposes, as Jason said. It, it evolved. And, and when it evolved, everything that I was looking for was here. And if you stay in the, the, the pathway and the journey long enough, you will find all of the jewels that are on this path. And so between the four of us, we have more than 100 years of service collectively. And we have all found some of the same jewels. And we decided to put them all in the same treasury so that we could be this group. You know, I'm so honored to uh, have you guys on. It's it's really a joy to get uh, reacquainted with you to reconnect. Uh, and in closing, I'd like to ask one of you to serve as the spokesperson to tell me what your hope for America is. <laughs> yeah, I'll dive in. Um, uh, Kelly, 
as voices of service, our our hope for America is, um, and this is something that I've, I'm very, very passionate about. Um, in, born in 1968, you know, I've seen this country transition into great things and terrible things. Um, but I will bring it from the aspect is that um, the four of us have experienced traumatic injuries, stress throughout our careers. And you're looking at over a hundred years of active duty service between the four of us. And we have soldiers, sailors, Marines, Coast Guardmen, uh, Air Space Airs for all of us. We, we all have a story even before the military, but those that are serving today, um, and I'll, I will extend it out because it's, it's not just about the veterans, it's about everybody, because you said America. There are so many people in America, Kelly, that are hurting. They're hurting through challenges, different walks of life, situational things, traumatic injuries, so I know that we have a purpose and I want for America to be healed. And I know music, art, um, a way of, of getting out is a part of that. But it seems like America has put so much of the cares of selfishness, their own ways, and it has stunt the growth of the nation of who we can become. And this group, Forces of Service, will be a group that will stand against right. all of that negativity, all of that selfishness, and we will do it through music, we will do it through arts, we will do it through songwriting to make people feel free and to let them know that whatever challenges that they face, they can overcome them. Ron, my friend, you will also do it through service. And service is the rent we pay for our place here on earth. I want to thank all of you again. And uh, I just love you guys. And 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 to your point, uh, together we have to keep on pumping up the music, especially the music that that is so inspiring uh, from all of you. Uh, so Ron... Uh, it's so good of you to be uh, with us, Ron Henry, uh, Jason, good of you to join us, Crystal, always good to see you as well, and uh, Caleb, my good friends, Voices of Service. Um, we're going to leave you, uh, America, with a song of hope. I'd certainly like to thank our guests who appeared on tonight's program and for their valuable service to this country. We appreciate all of them so much. In my final word, I have to quote this statement for the veteran thank you for bravely doing what you're called to do so we can safely do what we are free to do and it was abraham lincoln who stated this any nation that does not honor its heroes will not long endure remember that everybody if you see a veteran or an active duty member or a first responder a firefighter police officer Take time out to say thank you. God bless you, America. Stay strong. Let hope endure. Until next time, good night. I will not go quiet into the dark of night. I will not stand silent and watch the world go by in a single
America and my America. United we stand, divided.